All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today's video is inspired a bit by a story that happened to me recently. One of my best friends reached out to me the other week and he said, Ross, I heard that there are figs or wasps, excuse me, inside of our figs and that every fig has a dead wasp inside of it. And he said, I'm never eating figs again. And then later that night, my college uh, tennis coach actually asked me the same thing. And I thought, what is going on? Turns out they both had watched a 60 second video on Instagram. And this was a viral video where millions, I think millions of people had saw. And now of course, a lot of people are misled into thinking that, oh, I'll never eat figs because there's a wasp inside of it. So that's what we're doing in today's video. I wanna clear up some of that misinformation, talk about why that could be true, or why in most situations that's false. Um, and also talk about the amazing pollination process of the fig. Actually, it is fascinating. And we also are gonna cover some of the benefits as to why you would wanna pollinate your figs and why if you're eating a pollinated fig, why that could be better for you. So here we go. Let's talk about whether or not that information is true. Uh, if you're growing them at home, 99, 90 to 95% of us will not have a wasp inside of our figs. The reason for that is because the fig wasp, the blastophaga, which is a species of fig wasp that is mutualistic with the fig tree, Ficus carica, which by the way, Ficus carica has its own species of fig wasp. There is a species of wasp very particular to the fig. It's unlike, by the way, any other wasp that you've ever heard of. Honestly, it doesn't look anything like a wasp to me. It's so small, it's like the size of a small ant. Um, you would never even know it was there. You would barely even see it flying around your figs if it was in your area. But this wasp is just not present in most parts of the country. It's only in pockets. And I mean small pockets of California northern and southern it's not anywhere else it's not in arizona it's not in uh, texas it's not in uh, nevada uh, but it is however in the mediterranean and it is also in eastern and western parts of europe so if you're getting figs like the calamurna fig or turkish figs from turkey then of course they're going to be pollinated because the fig wasp is very so present in those areas also the Calamurna fig, which is the Turkish variety that they grow mainly, has to be pollinated. It requires pollination for it to actually ripen. Whereas most of the figs that we grow at home are called common figs and they never require pollination. So the fig is pretty amazing in that sense. So again, if you're getting them from the grocery store, different story, if you're growing them at home, different story. You can't just apply ones and zeros, all or nothing to every fact there ever is on the internet from a 60 second Instagram video. Um, so yeah, that's the little details on that. If you're getting them from California, there's a good chance they were pollinated. If you're getting them from South America, again, at the grocery store, actually not sure whether or not they're pollinating their figs on purpose or if they're in there uh, in that area. So Let's talk about the amazing pollination process really quickly. The, the fig wasp that is attracted to the fig, Ficus carica, through volatile compounds will come from a male fig that contains pollen. Uh, first of all, a female fig enters that male fig, also lays its eggs. But by the way, you cannot lay eggs inside of the female figs that we eat, but it will leave that, that male fig take the pollen with it, those newly hatched female wasps, and then come over here to the, the female figs, enter inside of them, lose their wings, and then they will, of course, um, pollinate it. And they won't lay any eggs because it's actually impossible for them. There's different flowers inside of each female fig compared to the male fig. So pretty cool. And then, of course, they die, and this is where people get hung up. But there's an enzyme within figs that uh, it's called physin. It's in the sap, it's in the leaves, and the branches, and the trunks, in the figs themselves, that has this enzyme physin that digests or disintegrates the fig wasp throughout its process of pollinating it. And so uh, by the time you eat it, which is about 45 roughly to 60 days later, 
you had never even known, you would never even see it, detect it, that there was at one point a dead wasp inside of your figs. And if you're really concerned about insects in your food, I would highly recommend doing more research on your food because you would not believe how many insects you eat on a daily basis. Uh, there are way more insects that you eat and the fig really should be one of these things that uh, you would never even really think about when it comes to the amount of bugs that you eat in each food that you eat. It's probably, and I'm sure it's definitely lower <laughs> on the spectrum of bugs that you're eating. Also the fig wasp, like I said, is very small and about the size of a small ant. And so it doesn't even really look like a wasp. And, you know, I don't really mind eating an ant. It's just the fact of life of eating figs, I think. Um, so again, if you're gonna be growing your own food, you're gonna be eating food, you're probably gonna be eating more insects than you think. But that's the pollination process. And it's, it is a huge benefit because the pollinated figs will be larger, higher quality, taste better, have more interesting flavors to them. And then of course the seeds within them become viable, allowing these figs, if you take the seeds out of them, to be planted either by us or by a bird to create new varieties. Isn't that amazing? And that's exactly what I'm doing behind me here and why I have so many fig trees and why over the years I've trialed 400 or more different fig varieties to figure out which ones are the best for my particular climate and people like myself in other parts of the world. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a huge genetic diversity that has been created from the fig wasp. And I am eternally grateful to the fig wasp for that reason. There are thousands of varieties that exist now because of the fig, uh, the fig wasp. They come in different sizes, shapes, colors, textures, flavors, eating experience, you name it. It is amazing. And I think uh, we ought to be really quite respectful to the fig wasp rather than like saying, oh my God, there's a dead insect in our figs. That's disgusting. So um, yeah, that's the video here, guys. Please, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button for me, hit the subscribe button for me. And also there's a documentary I've uh, put on my blog, figboss.com. Uh, it wasn't created by myself, but there's a whole article there that describes so much more information about the fig wasp. And of course you can go there and watch the documentary for free. It's there for educational purposes. And I thank you guys here for watching. We'll see you for the next one. Take care.